I am taking on a relaxed stance for this video because I'm trying to depict the allure of being unbothered since we are going to talk about the unbothered feminine woman. Particularly the term unbothered, but as many of you know on this channel, we dive deep into topics of femininity, so that's why I'm adding a feminine twist. The term unbothered is kind of in alignment with all of those viral terminology terms such as the lucky girl syndrome, um, the sparkle effect, becoming that girl. All of these things I truly think try to capture the essence of what it means to be a feminine woman. The inspiration for this video popped up basically due to the fact that I am approaching the age of 30 and at this point many people like to think that a woman's value kind of decreases but that is another topic for a different day. And and I realized that for some reason I feel more confidently beautiful at this age than I did when I was 19, 21 years old. And as I mentioned before on this channel, I used to do international pageants. So on paper, at that time, I should have been the most confident because I was the most objectively beautiful. However, now as I am aging, I have a mom pooch. Um, I look more tired. For some reason, I feel more confidently beautiful. And I really do think that it is in alignment with the concept of being unbothered. This doesn't mean that you live in delusion about your flaws, but this just means that you are a confident woman that can't be really shaken up by many influences. Somebody who knows who she truly is and presents herself and shows up as that woman every single day. Before we get into the tips on how I believe I have become this unbothered feminine woman, I would encourage you to hit the like button, leave your comments down below, let me know what you think about this term unbothered or how you like encompass it in your daily life. And if you are new here, I would appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. So the unbothered feminine woman, like I mentioned, we don't live in delusion here. I know my flaws, but the reason why I can show up as unbothered every single day is because because I don't let those flaws weigh me down since I have no time to think about that. I am constantly focused on how I can improve. There are many forces working against me, such as a baby who wakes up to eat multiple times a night. The fact that we live in like a pollution type of world and we're constantly swimming in carcinogens and fake hormones, etc. I am aging, all that kind of stuff. I don't need to go on and on and on about it, but I think it's important to accept your flaws, to acknowledge your flaws, and to basically take one step forward in a new direction every single day. It's okay to have bad days, to have slumps, but like I mentioned in previous videos on how I got over certain mental health obstacles, I allow myself to have a dedicated amount of time to wallow in the imperfections and like sorrow and feel bad for myself, and then I focus on moving forward. If you want tangible tips on your personal style, how to dress for your body, um, makeup tips, all that kind of stuff, go through my femininity playlist because I truly do break it down there. Knowing your body shape, for example, will help you better dress for it. After pregnancy, this has helped me feel more like a confident woman. Focusing on your three best features every single day will help you look more attractive. Those are tips that I'm thinking off the top of my head on ways that you can present yourself better tomorrow. Thinking about routines on how to streamline your beauty every single day, especially if you're a busy mom like me, getting those beauty things done every single day to help help you feel confident. Those are the things that are going to help you feel unbothered because you know that you have put 100% forward. People can choose to insult you or look at you a certain way, but you remain unbothered because you know you're putting your best effort. Like I've mentioned on this channel before, my mother always taught me that every woman can be beautiful by the age of 30. No, her uh, expression of this was totally different, but essentially what she was trying to say is that you have all the way up until the age of 30 to get over like those awkward teen years to find yourself in your 20s. I don't really like that terminology, but you understand what I'm saying and to get a grasp on what looks good for you. And every woman can do that and has the resources nowadays with the internet, that information being free and accessible, you get the point, 
to be beautiful by the age of 30. And if you're over the age of 30 and you're still listening to this, it's just an expression. It doesn't mean that you can't start today at whatever age you are. Like I mentioned, femininity is a constant journey, but it's just to put things in perspective for you. The second thing that I have done to be an unbothered feminine woman is that I don't consume much news. This doesn't mean that I live under a rock and I don't consume any news at all. However, I used to be somebody who's very into politics, watching the House of Commons on live stream while I was taking care of my baby, and I just felt as though that was causing for me to have less of that carefree feminine spirit that I was so wanting to bring into my everyday life, to be more playful with my husband, to be more playful with my children. And a big factor bringing that down was watching the news. The world is completely messed up nowadays. I am from Canada and North America in particular, there are a lot of similarities with the United States, but it's a hot mess over here. And in order to bring that feminine carefree spirit and joy into your home and is to just basically stop watching the news. And if you're going to consume it because you want to be informed, you know, if you, you have to make certain decisions and you need it for your safety to only consume it in small amounts. Again, I'm not trying to tell you to dumb yourself down and not be aware of the world. I am just trying to help you conserve your peace. And concerning content, another thing that I do is I don't really follow many trendy people. Alex Earl, that kind of stuff. You know, I've stumbled upon these people and it doesn't mean like an insult to their content, but I don't care if somebody has like 10 followers or 100,000 followers. I am focused on the content that they are producing and like how I can use it to better my life. So many of the trendy content creators, I don't really align with because what I'm trying to bring into my life is more like that traditional femininity type of content. So I'm very involved in like this niche that I'm creating of my content. But even if you're somebody who doesn't create content and you're just consuming, try to look at the whole picture of the person that you're consuming. Like what have they actually done in their life? If you're going for relationship advice or like femininity advice, what do they actually bring to the table? A good example of somebody who brings a lot of value to the femininity community in particular is Felicia the Feminine and Fancy. This woman has done so many amazing accomplishments such as acting. She is in a very loving relationship. She has homemaking skills that she has inherited from her mother. That's the type of content that I want to consume because I know that the fruits of the content that they're talking about actually show up in their life. And on the topic of people, I am somebody that has strong opinions, as you can probably tell by this channel. And that has caused me to, in the past, get into fights with people, or not necessarily fights, but like disputes about things or like strong conversations. And nowadays, if I feel as though the conversation is going that way and I have a fundamental disagreement with somebody, I will just let it go. I don't don't fight with people very often. Occasionally, I can't help myself on Reddit because I'm on a lot of mom forums where I just feel as though I need to say something. But in general, 98% of the time, I don't because those that 2% of the time that I do, I realize that you can rarely change somebody's mind with your strong opinion. The only way that you can do that is through example and on the internet, you're just not gonna be able to do that. But again, in real life, even if that conversation is going down the road in terms of a dispute. Understand that a lot of people's opinion is formed based on their core values and for people to change their core values, a lot of times they have to go through a traumatic experience or they have to have some sort of awakening in terms of their religion or somebody extremely dear to them has to go through the said thing that you're disagreeing about. During with a friend, oftentimes that's going to do more harm than it is going to do good. Not many people are into self-help content, for example. so you're probably not going to be the answer to make that person change their mind. And to remain unbothered, you kind of just have to let people be and understand that you living your life this way 
and showing up joyful in your life in terms of whatever value that you're trying to portray is the biggest influence and the most that you can actually do. Like for example, living in the North as a traditional wife, as a housewife, not very popular. However, I've been able to change people's mind on the value of traditional woman's work, all that kind of stuff by showing up in my life and being an example of how I am not oppressed and this is not bad and I have a healthy marriage and this is a good thing for my kids which has caused people to reconsider the lifestyle choices that they have been making with their children for example but this has not come about by me pushing my opinion on traditional living to them it has come about with me being unbothered and just doing my thing and living as, and living as positive as I possibly can I also want you to realize that when you're trying a new lifestyle or a new style like I mentioned being a traditional wife you know sometimes I think like what do the people that I went to high school think about my content on YouTube probably not the best necessarily or like I went through a phase where I decided to completely ditch pants and wear dresses but I had this awkward adjustment period of like finding the right length and the dresses for my body shape I had to realize that many people who are observing my lifestyle you know they might have a judgment in the moment or in a two-minute conversation with somebody else but the judgment stops there and you shouldn't live your entire life based on what somebody thinks in that particular moment being unbothered acknowledges that somebody might have a negative judgment about you especially if you're doing something uncommon but in order to live your best feminine self you have to understand that those judgments are only temporary and a lot of times people are judging other people to make themselves feel better about their choices it isn't a direct reflection on you a very simplistic example I can use is that I started to use a safety tether since I live in a busy city with my toddler so that he doesn't actually injure himself or run away and at first glance <laughs> People do judge this. However, I know that I'm doing the best thing for my child as he learns what it means to hold my hand and that those people's and that their judgments are only temporary, but the greater good of my child actually learning how to walk on the sidewalk and not walking into the street is worth using that tether for that certain period of time so that he can get used to developing that skill rather than like keeping him inside and having him not learn how to explore the the world and then down the road it being more of a negative thing so take that example and of course extrapolate it to whatever you're going through in your life particularly those of you who are focused on developing your femininity those more hardcore skills such as your mannerisms your voice um, your attitude your positivity your interaction and conversation with others understand that there are going to be some bumps as you step into this new role because we have been so conditioned in society to suppress our femininity so you have to redevelop those skills that will eventually become second nature in time and lastly something that I encourage especially all moms to do is to treat yourself every single day constantly insert little treats throughout your day what I mean by that is like a face mask or um, going to get a fancy coffee whatever is within your budget I know many of you are into sewing working on a little sewing project for a couple minutes here and there me filming this YouTube video is my hobby this is also a treat you have to take what little amount of time you have or what big amount of time you have whatever amount of time you have and it's very important for you to treat yourself particularly in the realm of for those of you who are working on your femininity because this is going to help you with a creative outlet it's what i like to call one of the core pillars of femininity because it's constantly like you are indulging yourself in the little things and you're also showing greater appreciation for those small pockets of joy that you insert throughout your day which is going to help you present your yourself as more of a positive person in addition this is going to help you get out of any type of slump that you have because you're going to have little things that you can enjoy throughout the day thank you so much for watching this video once again hit the like button share the video if you enjoyed it leave your comments down below subscribe if you haven't done so already and I look forward to our next video bye bye